Welcome to Dojo Libby Medical High School and our annual night of welcome. Uh, I wanted to take a moment here and introduce myself. My name is Robert Young. I am the physiology and AP biology teacher here at Dojo Libby. I wanted to thank and uh, we hope that you enjoy our presentation. We are here uh, to talk about uh, the things that make our school unique and so that you and your child have a all the information you need in order to make an informed decision about your educational career. We would like to remind you that if you decide that this school is the right fit for you, we are making a four year commitment uh, to your student if you are willing to make a four year commitment to our program. So we want you to understand the facilities, our program, our limitations, and the high expectations that we have here at Dozier Libby so that you can make the best choice possible. So I want to begin by just kind of sharing that we are a distinguished school. We have been recognized uh, by the US News and World Report uh, rankings, and uh, we are very proud of our school and our traditions that we have here at Dozier Libby but it really goes back to our mission. So our mission, as it has been for the last number of years, is to challenge students with an exciting, rigorous curriculum that's gonna prepare them to be successful in health science professions and in college. We are a health sciences magnet school. Uh, this, however, is not a school just for elite students. We are an elite school, not a school for elite students. So we welcome everyone. There is a place for you at Dozier Libby. If you are willing to make the commitment to us, we are willing to work with you and make the commitment back to you. Uh, that phrase, this is an elite school, not a school for elite students, dates all the way back to before this school was founded by Gary Agopian, who was a school board member and very influential member uh, of the planning committee before the school even opened. So we want you to know that we are open to everyone as long as you are willing to work hard and make a commitment to your educational career. So I'm here to talk about our course of study. That is, what do we require our students to take? What classes are you going to be taking if you come here to Dozier Libby? So we'll start as a ninth grader. You coming in next year as a ninth grade student, what classes can you expect to take? Well. You're going to take English and you're going to take a math class, either Algebra 1 or Geometry, depending on your placement coming out of 8th grade. You're going to take Biology. You're going to take Health Science 1. You're going to take a PE class. And if required, you'll be in an ELD class or in a special ed resource class if that's required for you. And then you get an elective, a choice of elective. And our choices here are limited. You can take Spanish, either Spanish 1 or Spanish 2 depending on your incoming Spanish level. You can take art or you can take band. But you'll see here that most of our ninth grade students are only taking six classes. Uh, when you move on to become a 10th grader, you start to get a few choices, right? but the choices are really just in terms of the level of class that you're going to take. So you can take college prep English 10, or you can take advanced English 10 if you think you might be more advanced and looking for a little bit more of a challenge. Eyeing maybe taking AP English as a junior or senior. Your math class will of course change, moving on to geometry or algebra two. In chemistry, you get a choice of either chemistry, regular chemistry or honors chemistry for those who again would like a little bit more of an academic challenge. You're going to take a second year of health science. You're still going to take PE and you're going to take a world history class, either regular world history, college prep world history, or an AP world history class. Again, for those who are looking for more of a challenge. And you're going to get an elective, Spanish art band. Right? If you are in ELD or special ed, you may have to postpone that elective class um, in the 10th grade, you may have to postpone taking that elective class until you are a junior because you can see that all of our sophomores, all of our 10th grade students have seven required classes. As a junior, you start to get a little bit more choice again. Right? So again, choice of level of English, 
English 11 or AP English. Your math class, of course, Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus. You're going to take Physiology. That is a required class. Your junior year it is a third year of a science class. You will take Health Science 3 and you'll take either US History or AP US History. But you'll notice because you no longer have PE that you get a choice of elective here. So Spanish Art Band again, but also you could take AP Biology. You can take sports medicine class or first responder. And then as a senior, you're again going to have a choice of English class, regular college prep English or AP English. You'll take a fourth year of a math class. We do require our, se our seniors to take math class, AP Calc or AP Stat, depending on what year uh, you happen to be in, medical math or pre-calc. Uh, we do require physics. Physics is a fourth year of a lab science class, and medical ethics is your fourth year of health science class. And then you'll take the government econ class where it's one semester of government and one semester of econ. You'll notice that you still get those same electives, Spanish, art band, AP bio, sports med, first responder, and now AP psychology is a class that is available to our seniors. So if we want to look at it in a summary here, when you come to Dozier Libby, you will be taking four years of English. You will be taking four years of science. You will be taking four years of health science. You'll be taking three years of social science. You'll be taking three or four years of math, depending on what level of math you happen to get through as a junior. Two years of PE, two years of Spanish or some other foreign language. We only offer Spanish on our campus and a year of visual and performing arts. That's your art class or band. Now, we do want to point out that if you earn a C or better in all of these classes, you will be receiving, in addition to your diploma, you'll be receiving the Dozier Libby Certificate of Excellence to, to uh, show that you have gone above and beyond uh, what has been required. So what are the main differences between Dozier Libby and the other high schools in our district? Uh, we have fewer AP offerings. We are a smaller school. We do not have the ability to offer all of those other AP classes that you might find at Dozier Libby, or not, sorry, not at Dozier Libby, that you might find at Deer Valley or Antioch High School. The course of study requirements that we require here exceed the district graduation requirements. The district says you need two years of science to graduate. We at Dozier Libby say you're going to take four years of science to finish our program. Our course of study exceeds the UC CSU A to G requirements. So when you finish your course of study here at Dozier Libby, you will be ready to enroll in college. We have a highly integrated course of study. That is that a lot of our courses build on each other and a lot of our courses overlap and work with each other when it comes to projects, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. And you'll also notice that we have a limited choice of elective classes. Again, we are a smaller school. We do not have the ability to offer a lot of different electives. We do not have the ability to offer different foreign languages. We do not have the offer ability to offer different levels of art when we do not have the ability to offer different varieties of science classes. And we are a smaller school and based on the limitations of that size, we have limited choice of electives. But remember, you're choosing to come to Dozier Libby because you are interested in healthcare, health professions, medicine, something like that. In terms of our integrated course of study at all grade levels, students participate in a variety of projects that are integrated amongst the classes. With what we mean by that is that you'll be working on a project in say your biology class and you'll be completing a piece of that in your health science class and you may be reading and writing something about that in your English class. There are a variety of projects that build on each other over your course of time at Dozier Libby. So we do have those projects at the freshman level, at the sophomore level, at the junior level, and at the senior level that are integrated amongst your classes and that build on the knowledge and skills that you have developed throughout your time here at Dozier Libby. Those projects are going to culminate in some sort of a senior capstone project that takes place during the second semester of your senior year. And it is one of those things we do encourage all of our seniors to complete and participate in that senior capstone project as a reflective way to look at what it is you have done in your time and how you have grown 
in your experiences at Dozier Libby. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I wanted to share with you our vital signs. These are our school-wide learning outcomes. These are things that we strongly believe in and work towards preparing your student so that when they leave our doors at Dozier Libby and go off to college or to the world around them, that they are prepared to be a successful and contributing member of our society. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And if you have other questions, there will be a question and answer period at some point. Thank you. Hello and welcome prospective Dozier Libby students and families. Uh, my name is Callie Martinez. I teach freshman biology and I hope to meet many of you guys uh, in August um, when the next school year starts. Now that you have heard a bit um, from my colleagues about what the coursework is at our school and some of the extracurricular activities, I am going to talk to you a little bit about the logistics of going to school on our campus. Of course, what I am going to be talking about today will refer to in person on campus learning, um, which is where we all hope that we will be in the fall of this year. So one of the primary things that I do want to mention is it's incredibly important to know the location of our school. Uh, we are kind of tucked away um, behind Kaiser, hey, and being on the far side of Antioch like this means that it can be quite a struggle uh, for students um, and families to get to our campus if you are living on the opposite side of Antioch. Um, so if you had not had an opportunity yet to drive by our school, we would highly encourage you to make yourself aware of the actual location. Um, as we all know, getting across town can be difficult um, to do in a hurry, um, even when school is not in session and we're not dealing with regular uh, morning and PM uh, school traffic. So that being said, once you have gotten to the location of our school site, uh, due to the fact that there is just a single driveway in and out of our campus means that traffic does tend to build up quite a bit in the morning. Um, for myself, um, I will say that it, even five minutes um, can make a big difference. So the time you leave your house um, is really important. Uh, we hope to go back to our uh, normal block schedule in the fall. Um, so I would recommend to be on campus or aim to be on campus by 730 for a zero period class, which has an eight o'clock start time. And I recommend trying to be on campus by 830 for a first period class, which has an 850 start time. There are different options on how to get to school. In this image, you can see there is a bus stop right by Kaiser. Many of our students take the bus um, and then would cross the street here and walk down this long driveway um, to get to campus. Hey, um, we can do some things to try and help with traffic, but it, your best weapon is just going to be to leave uh, your home a bit earlier. Um, and I just want to mention that I the uh, the, one of the biggest struggles that I hear from families um, is if you are in a situation where you have to drop off multiple students at multiple school sites. Um, so we just want to give you a heads up that that is a concern that we have heard uh, from our Dozier Libby families. Um, and of course, being tardy because of traffic um, is not an excuse tardy. OK, since we are a medical pathway school, hey, we do like for our students to wear scrubs. Hey, uh, it allows them to look like professionals, both when they are on campus uh, and when we have visitors on campus, they have remarked on how professional our students look. Hey, um, and then also when students leave campus, sometimes for college tours or other events, um, it is nice to prevent ourselves, present ourselves in a professional manner. So on our campus, we do wear scrubs. Uh, students do have a lot of options in terms of colors and patterns of scrubs. I have seen students personalize them. One of my favorites was a tie dye pair of scrubs. Uh, students are also allowed to wear what we call spirit wear. So we do have shirts 
um, either for PE uh, or for classes like AP classes, different clubs. Many of them will design uh, personalized spirit wear shirts. Those are allowed to be worn on top uh, with scrub pants um, on the bottom. Um, many times in the year, we will ask students to wear what we call professional dress. Okay, uh, this would be usually for a presentation or an interview. Um, in this example here, we have two seniors. I will say it can take um, many tries to get the right kind of professional dress look. We do not expect for any freshman families um, to go out and break the bank um, over any kind of um, school appropriate attire, um, but we will direct students onto what kind of clothing is appropriate in these situations. So that is something to keep in mind. Hey, on our um, campus, we do a lot of project based learning and a lot of group work. Uh, the reason that I want to mention this now is because group work ends up being a large part of students grades. That means that, of course, school attendance is important so that you can meet and work with your group, but I also wanted to give you a heads up that it might also involve meeting um, with other students outside of class time. Some of our students will stay on campus um, and do work together after school, maybe filming a video for their Spanish class, or sometimes um, students might be interested in getting together on the weekends to work. We do also have advisory period uh, on that is part of our school day, um, and that is another opportunity for students to work together. Hey, but we just want to give you this warning because yes, your students might be saying, oh, I need to get a ride on the weekend um, to see their team members to be able to complete their school work. Hey, that brings me to attendance. Hey, um, you have to be in class to learn. You need to be at school. We want to see our students every day if possible. A lot of the learning that we do on our campus takes place in the classroom. Uh, we're having conversations, we're doing activities, there's group work, there's projects. Therefore, if you are not attending school, you are missing out on these interactions um, and opportunities. Uh, there is there are options um, for makeup work, uh, but these should be used um, sparingly. And what many of our students will tell you is that due to our block schedule, hey, which means that classes are longer, but only meet um, every other day. Hey, um, what that means is that if you miss a day of class, it very much feels like you miss two days. Um, and if you speak to any current students or alumni, um, they would kind of give you that kind of recommendation as well. That if you're going to miss um, some school time to try and minimize it, otherwise you will feel uh, like you are pretty far behind. Um, keep in mind that our class time is very precious to us, so it is very rigorous. And again, if you're missing um, a large amount of school time, uh, that could definitely affect uh, students grades. Also, as I mentioned in the previous slide, students will be doing group work. So not only will they be missing out um, on some opportunities in terms of their grades, but also uh, we don't want them to be letting their group members down. Students will oftentimes divide up work in a group um, and therefore they are really counting on each other. Uh, and a student's absence might actually impact um, the work of the entire group. So please be um, conscientious of that as well. So due to all of the above reasons, um, we very much want students on our campus. However, we do know that there are going to be uh, family emergency situations and students will not be able to come to campus. Um, in the event that that arises, we ask that parents contact um, the front office staff to request an independent study this will allow us to give alternative assignments um, so that students do not fall behind in their coursework. But again, please use them sparingly. Um, please plan family vacations um, around your child's school calendar. 
OK, on our campus, there are many teachers who will say that we do not give extra credit or late work. Uh, you might find a couple of extra credit points here and there, um, or a couple of teachers who might allow one hey, project turned in late each semester. Hey, you should not plan on being allowed to do extra credit or late work to bring up your grade. Again, most students, um, sorry, most teachers on our campus uh, do not do either of these two things, extra credit or late work. We are a college preparatory school. We expect students to be completed on time and for students to meet deadlines. Therefore, there's no extra credit or late work. Uh, we do, of course, support students on our school site. Um, so even though we do not allow um, for extra credit, hey, we have tutoring programs, advisory, hey, um, and other ways that we can very much support our students. So hopefully they are able to meet those deadlines. Okay, then finally, what I want to leave you all with um, is just a reminder to keep all of your contact information updated. Uh, there are many times where I've tried to get in touch with a student's family um, and I have tried to call all of the phone numbers that are listed in Aries um, and still had a really hard time contacting someone. So please make sure that not only your email address and phone number um, are correct, but all the information that's on Aries so that if there is an emergency or any other type of situation where the school is trying to get in contact with you, um, just make sure that we are able to. Uh, so again, we hope that this information helps you to make uh, the best decision for your family. Doja Libby Medical High School offers a variety of extracurricular activities. Doja Libby students may participate in all sports offered at Deer Valley and Antioch High School. Students must play at their district designated school. In order to play high school sports, students must have a physical examination before tryouts. Students must maintain a 2.0 GPA in order to play sports. If you're interested in playing sports, check the school's website for information. Students leave our campus at 1.30 on game days. They miss most of their fifth or sixth period class. It is the student's responsibility to find out what he or she missed and to make it up in a timely manner. Parents provide transportation to Deer Valley or Antioch. The back to school dance and the winter ball are two dances that freshmen can attend without a guest pass from an upperclassman. Junior prom and senior ball are open to freshmen if they are a guest of an upperclassman. Students must maintain a 2.0 GPA and a satisfactory discipline record to attend dances. These are the clubs we have at Dozier Libby. At the beginning of the year is Club Rush. Each club sets up a table in the quad and recruits club members. Clubs meet at lunch and after school. HOSA is a national organization that prepares students to enter the healthcare field. Our local chapter meets on campus and is engaged in disaster drills, running flu clinics, 
and learning about healthcare from guest speakers. HOSA members have an opportunity to participate in state and international leadership conferences where they attend workshops and compete in medical events. Our HOSA chapter has gone to Sacramento, Anaheim, Tennessee, and Orlando to compete. Job shadowing is a useful way to learn about a particular job of interest. By observing a day in the life of a professional, the student learns what the job is really like. Doja Libby currently works with Sutter Delta and John Muir to provide job shadowing opportunities to our 11th grade students. An internship is an opportunity that employers offer to students interested in gaining work experience in particular industries. An intern works at a company for a fixed period of time ranging from three to six months. Doja Libby currently works with Kaiser Permanente to provide internship opportunities to our 12th grade students. Friday activities are games and competitions played for fun at lunch on Fridays. It's a casual way to help students socialize and celebrate the end of the school week. Open Gym is an opportunity to play basketball after school on Fridays from 3 to 4. On Mondays, the fitness room is open for students to work out from 3 to 3.45. Various sports tournaments are held throughout the year for all Doja Libby students. Tournaments in past years have been offered for basketball, volleyball, badminton, and soccer. And we also have our annual powder puff football game between the junior and senior girls. The Talented Student Showcase and the Night of Expression are evening events that allow students to perform their special talents. Welcome to Dozier Libby Medical High School. My name is Scott Osterholt and I'm the principal. Dozier Libby Medical High School prides itself in having a strong school culture one that is built on strong relationships with teachers, staff, students, and families. Our grade level teams, advisory, and clubs create a welcoming and supportive environment. We have received many awards since our opening in 2008. We are a California Distinguished School, most recently recognized in U.S. News and World Report as one of the top California high schools for 2020. The Dozier Libby culture and academics guarantee that all graduates are prepared for college and academic success. Welcome, my name is Daniela. Hi guys, my name is Sophia. Hi everyone, my name is Jacqueline. My name is Abraham Diaz and we are currently seniors, class of 2021 of Dozier Levy Medical High School. So to start off is my advice for the upcoming students is that you will be working with others a lot of the times throughout your four years at Dozier Levy Medical High School. And you will have to um, determine who is a great partner and who will put in the effort for you guys' projects. There will be times when the teacher decides to put you guys into groups. And um, by then, you need to um, um, help them out and don't expect others to, like, do the, to do the work for you because nobody's going to pick you for the upcoming um, projects and then the time when you really want to do good in a project the ones that actually put an effort will not be choosing you because you didn't put it in last time so please i'm begging you to just do your part in group projects i wish somebody had told me that you really need to put in your project your part in the project because um, the projects is a really big grade in um, your overall classes and all of your classes, you will be representing at least once. And so um, by the time you get, to, um, you get a good project, I mean, a good um, group for a project, you'll be having fun and 
when you complete it, it will be even faster. And then like, it would just go through smooth, smoothly. And adding back to like, you're going to have to be doing uh, at Dojo Libby, you're going to be doing presentations almost depending on the classes you take, you might be doing small presentations like four times a month. Um, my freshman year, I did do um, a lot of mini presentations to get me out of the conference zone. But that's one big thing I wish they would have told me to. And I think you guys should know this too. So for some advice I have for upcoming freshmen for clubs is join as many clubs you guys think you guys can handle. Because hopefully you guys are going to stay here for the four years and a great way to get to know your school and your classmates better is by joining clubs. I remember when I was a freshman, I was really shy and timid. So I only joined one club, which was Mesa, and I really enjoyed it. It was really fun competing um, at East Bay. So I joined the next year and I also joined other clubs like Delta Squared and I even created my own called Book Club. Um, and I'm really grateful for these experience I've gotten from these clubs. I've made a lot of friends. Um, and hopefully when you guys come here, there are a lot of variety of clubs to choose from. So maybe you can find your, the one that you guys really like, or you can just create your own. Uh, adding on to what Sophia said, um, if you don't end up finding a club that um, you would be particularly interested in, you can always create your own. Many, um, I would say like most of the clubs that we have are student led and student created. Um, so if you want to just find a teacher advisor for that club you want to do and go for it. Um, I think a very good club to start off with if you're really interested in the healthcare field is HOSA. Um, it's the large one of the largest clubs on campus and it's a really good way to get your foot in the door as far as um, learning about health career fields and doing hands on activities. Following along with what they said, I would recommend for uh, you students to contribute in these clubs because not only does it look good in your college transcripts, but it is also good for the community depending on what club you uh, serve. And it is also for good for the funding of our, of our school. And because you interact with the most students when it comes to clubs, not just in the classrooms. One piece of advice I have for you guys is that at LMC or any other community college, you can take classes for only $1 per unit if you are at least 14 years old. Um, for example, if you wanna take a sign language or math class, it would only cost you about $5. I would highly encourage taking community college classes during high school, which looks very good on your college applications and resume. Um, I would also say, don't be afraid about taking college courses because many of your classmates might take the same classes you are, making the experience more fun and enjoyable. Adding to what um, Jackie said, I took uh, 3D modeling and animation for the summer uh, with a couple of friends. And it was actually, it was throughout the summer, but it kind of felt fast because it was just, a fun experience to be um, like practicing something new and then going back to school I had an extra class to take um, what I wanted here at school which I took like sports medicine or first responders. When it comes to the arrival to the actual campus we are known to have a traffic jam of 20 minutes before the start of school and as well as the first 20 minutes right after school ends. Most of the teachers at our school are strict when it comes to attendance because they continuously tell students to avoid being late. So I would advise to either go on your way to school either 35 or 30 minutes before your first class period starts. When it comes to the parking, however, there are approximately 40 spots. So if your parents were to wait for you uh, until the end of school or would wait for you until school ends, uh, make sure to be there as quickly as possible uh, before the jam commences. Yeah, and to add on what Abe's, Abraham has said is that if your parents are waiting at you, for you at the main entrance, walk as fast as you can because there's a lot of um, cars waiting for your parents to move out of the way. Yeah, from personal experience, my parents have said that it was way faster if we walked to the hospital instead of waiting in the car, um, the long line. And also um, just, it was kind of fun walking with friends and just talking on the way. So you don't really like, Feel like it's a long time. And that's our advice. Thank you all so much for listening. 
I really hope you guys take in um, those you're leaving medical high school as your top priority to go to. It was the best decision I've made and hopefully it will be the best for you guys. I really enjoyed my experience here at Dojo Libby, but don't just take my word for it, experience it for yourself. We wish you best of luck, class of 2025 from class of 2021. Thank you for watching. Please scan the QR code or follow the link to our live question and answer event starting tonight at 6.40 p.m. on Teams. See you there.